as a teacher, it gets frustrating when you have to repeat yourself over and over and over and over again. This can get old quick, and you might have even told your students something like, I will not repeat myself again, but this can be counterproductive. As much as you might not like repeating yourself, repetition and reinforcing concepts is something really helpful to people who are learning for the first time. As a teacher, it's your job to do whatever it takes to get the information to your students in as many ways as possible. Of course, every situation is different, and if you have a student who is genuinely not trying to learn, that's a different problem, and you need to communicate with them individually to find the source of the issue. But as a general rule, don't be afraid to repeat yourself. For me personally, I will literally say the same thing as many times as I need to for the student to understand and feel comfortable with the information. I'm also aware of the information's effectiveness on a student, and if I feel something is not being understood, I say the same thing in as many different ways needed for the student to get it. In a group setting, this gets pretty interesting. If you have, let's say, 15 people in a room and you're teaching them all at one time and you say something once, maybe five of them will get it the first time. Then as you repeat the information, more and more people understand. And sometimes you have to change the way that you're saying something to get the last few people on board. In fact, I have never been teaching a group of students where all of them understand something the very first time I introduce it. And it took me many years of teaching to realize this because the students will not tell you that they don't understand something. You will literally say, does that make sense? And everyone in the room will say yes, even if they don't mean it. And I've had many conversations with students where they explain that this kind of behavior is so they avoid looking like an idiot in front of their peers. Basically, they don't want to be the only one in the room who doesn't get something. And whether this is so it doesn't hurt their pride or they don't want to hold the class back from moving forward, this type of student behavior is not a good thing, which that's a whole other topic in and of itself. But the point here I'm trying to make, and this is for the educators, is if you're saying something one time and moving on, chances are you don't have everyone on board on the educational journey. Now, you might be asking yourself, so what do I do now? I can't just go around randomly repeating myself. The tactic is to reinforce ideas as part of your process. As you add additional information, always reference back to the main idea and talk about the theme of information in a holistic way. Then as your students practice, repeat the information over and over to reinforce the concepts. Then make sure you're letting the students know individually what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong so they can dial in their performance over time. For example, if you were teaching a drumline how to play, let's say, triplet roles, you would explain the concept and provide some checkpoints for the students to follow. And remember, these checkpoints are things that you are repeating over and over again. Then you embellish those concepts with supporting comments. Now, for triplet roles specifically, some triplet role checkpoints would be play the triplet check pattern in time and play all diddles rhythmically accurate. As long as these two things are happening, the role will be played with quality. However, there are a lot of variables that cause these not to happen. So you talk about them in more detail with supporting comments. And some supporting comments might be, don't allow the diddles to change the triplet roll hand motions. Know your listening situation and balance to the contact sound of that person and drive your feet and put your hands to your feet. Through a rehearsal block, you might mix these comments together as you teach. So here's what a set of feedback comments might sound like during rehearsal. All right, you guys, we're gonna go ahead and play triplet rolls. Uh, two big things that we wanna think about while we're doing this. Play the triplet check pattern in time and play all diddles rhythmically accurate. Remember, we've played the check Hand motions are in triplets. Make sure that that check pattern does not change. And as we are playing these diddles, digga 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 da, on top of that triplet check pattern, 
play those rhythmically accurate. We should hear nice 16th note triplets. All right, here we go. Eight and you're in. The drum line plays. Last time. Release. Relax. Then I would say something like, all right, great job, you guys. Now, don't allow the diddles to change the triplet hand motions. We're good in the check. We're playing in time in the check, but now our hand motions are starting to slow down. So don't allow the diddles to change the triplet hand motions. Here we go again. Drumline plays, last time, release, relax. All right, you guys, make sure you know your listening situation and balance to the contact sound of that person. Everyone point to where they're listening to. Everybody points, okay? Now at this point, you wanna make sure that you are giving advice based on what's actually happening. But as an overarching theme, you are saying these main ideas and really getting that as sort of a mantra for them to think about as checkpoints as they play. So you're pointing out things, you're getting super detailed, but then you're also making sure that you're repeating yourself and saying, all right, guys, we're going to play the triplet check in time, play all diddles rhythmically accurate. They play again, then you hit them with that last time. It's time to go. All right, guys, last time, make sure two biggest things, play the triplet check in time, play all diddles rhythmically accurate. Now, you know, the block ends and everyone is leaving. And even if they don't remember exactly all the little teeny tiny details that happened, they at least have these main ideas in their head. And that's a very good place for the performers to be in the interim between uh, rehearsal ending and being in their practice time. And now when they're in their practice time, they have these ideas in their head of, okay, something that they definitely made sure to let us know was to play the triplet check pattern in time and to play the diddles rhythmically accurate. So now without you being there with the student, they have you there in their mind because you have given them that repetition of information and they remembered it. If you don't like repeating yourself, this isn't the most fun way to teach, but it can be the most effective. And in my book, any teaching method that helps my students get better and reach their goals in the most comprehensive way possible, that is the most fun. I want to make sure that it is a full, total comprehension, 100% of the group is fully understanding what's happening. And a lot of times, the only way for that to happen is through repetition of information, which means you got to repeat yourself. All right. So thank you, guys. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this, please give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share it with your friends. And as always, keep practicing like the best so you can perform like the best. This is Mark Perrette with Gridbook Percussion. Signing out. Peace.